What's poppin' YouTube? It's your boy, Justin, AKA Adobe One Kenobi, back for another tutorial. Today, we are talking YouTube intros, how to make a dynamic one within After Effects. Now here is a quick example of what it's gonna look like. Now, if you like the looks of that intro, stick around for the whole video so you can figure out how to make it from scratch. If not, I will have the project file for this exact intro in the description below, so feel free to check that out as well if you're in a time crunch and you don't have time to start from scratch. Now, with that being said, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. I know you're gonna like the video, I can almost guarantee it. And finally, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We've been posting every day or so, and I don't plan on stopping, so if you don't wanna miss any of the content, hit that subscribe button like I said, and let's get right into the video. All right, so go ahead and open up After Effects and we're gonna create a new composition with the width at 1920, height at 1080, frame rate at 23.976, and we're just gonna name it and make it 20 seconds long. Then I'm just going to create some folders to keep my work organized. Now, the first step is we are going to go and find a few stock images that we're gonna use for our intro. I use pexels.com, uh, some really good stock photo and video. Um, if you have another website or a stock subscription, feel free to use those. Just pick about four or five photos that really represent what your channel's about and what your content is going to reflect. So I'm gonna be searching for some film or video editing photos, and then I'm going to import them into After Effects. All right, so now that we have our photos inside After Effects, what we're going to do is we're going to locate the one we want to start off with, drop it into our sequence, and then adjust the scale by hitting S on your keyboard and lowering it until it fits the screen. Then hit P for position. We're going to hit a keyframe at zero seconds, move ahead 20 frames, hit another one, go to the first keyframe, and adjust your position so that it starts at the top of the screen. And we're going to right click on our first keyframe, go down to keyframe assistant, hit easy ease out, go to our last keyframe, hit keyframe assistant, go to easy ease in, select them both and go up to your graph editor. You're gonna go ahead and open up your graph editor and change the ramp on these to about 60%. You can see the influence there, it says about 60. I'm gonna be doing this for all of our keyframes today just so that the ease in and ease out kind of matches and everything works in good timing. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is set a scale position as soon as the position keyframe is done and we're just going to move ahead about three seconds and increase that scale so that as soon as the photo drops in, it starts getting bigger. Now that's looking a little quick, so I'm just gonna play with this until I get the, the size increase that I want. That looks about good. Alrighty, now the last thing we're gonna do is go back to our position keyframes and we are just going to animate it out exactly how it animated in. So about 20 keyframes, ease out, ease in, and then go to your graph editor and make your influence around 60 or as close to it as you can. And there we go, we have a nice animation out that looks exactly how it did when it animated in. Now we're just going to cut the clip at that last key from there by hitting Shift Command D if you're on Mac and we're gonna do the exact same thing with the next photo. So I'm not gonna go over it in detail again, but just repeat the steps we just went over for the first photo and do the exact same thing for the next four or five photos. Now, when you are placing your position keyframes, you wanna make sure that the photo, like the second photo is going to line up with the top of the first photo so that when it animates into frame, it is completely lined up with photo one exiting the frame. So you might have to play around with the keyframes a little bit, but once you get it nice and good, it will look proper, I promise. Now we're gonna do the same thing, just kind of scale up the second photo so that there's a constant motion with all of these photos and it looks a little bit organic. There we go, I'm liking that speed a little bit more. So again, just animate the position keyframes out and repeat all the steps from photo one throughout photos two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Um, obviously, you can play around with the look and feel. These are just starter steps. Um, feel free to play around with the keyframe lengths, the speed, all of that. It's all about getting that quick and concise intro that fits the vibe of your video, fits the vibe of your brand, and also finding the right music to match the speed and feel of this animation. 
Okay, so now we're just gonna throw in our last photo and again, go through the position keyframe steps as well as the graph editor steps. And then finally, the scale steps. Now with this last one, you'll see when it's animating in, because of how the keyframes are set up, we are getting a little bit of a space in between the two photos. When we play at full speed, you might not notice, but it's good practice just to make sure that they are overlapping the slightest, so there are no empty spaces in your intro. So I'm just gonna scale up the last image so it overlaps naturally, and I think that looks pretty good. All right, so finally, adjust the position keyframes to animate out. Same thing with the easy ease in, easy ease out, graph editor, influence percentage to about 60, and voila. Now we have our base animation. So we have a dynamic animated slideshow. Now next we're gonna go up to effects and presets and look for tint, and we're gonna drag that onto our first clip. We are going to change our black color to a dark red and then map our white color to a bright red. So now all of the blacks in the original photo are gonna be a dark red and all of the whites are gonna be a bright red. Now we're just gonna copy and paste this tint effect onto all of our photos as well. And you'll see all the photos have this nice red overlay look. Now I'm gonna take my text tool and go ahead and just write learn for the first photo. I'm gonna have a sequence of three or four words that are kind of buzzwords for my channel. So the first one's gonna be learn. I'm gonna find the right font and then I'm going to find the right size probably put that around 250 and then I'm just gonna align it so it's in the center. And I think that looks good. You can turn on your proportional grid if you want to make it in the center or just use your align tools, which does it automatically. All right, so now that we got our text in place, what we're gonna do is drop down the text menu and we're gonna hit this little triangle icon before, beside animate and go up to position. And then we're gonna scale our position down hit a keyframe at the start of our clip, and then bring it back to zero so that you see it's kind of animating up in the opposite direction that the photo is sliding down. And again, ease in and ease out our keyframes, and then go into our graph editor and set the influence percentage to 60%. So you'll see you have a nice little slide in there with the text. And last but not least, we're just gonna make a mask rectangle around the text so that when it slides in, it's kind of appearing at the same time and isn't already just sitting on the screen. And I'm just going to adjust the starting position as well to make it come in a little bit faster. Now, I think that looks pretty good. Now we just have to animate the text out. So we're gonna continue with this theme of the text going in the opposite direction of the photos. So we will go back to our position keyframes, set the keyframe, and 20 frames later, just animate the position upwards so that it's sliding out of the mask and therefore disappearing from frame as the second photo is sliding in. Now we're going to duplicate our text and just change it so it says explore. We'll also delete all the keyframes and we'll move it over so that it appears when the second photo is sliding in. So like I said, I'm just gonna write explore, make sure it's spelled correctly, align it to the center. And again, go up to the animate tab and add position keyframes and pretty much repeat all the steps from the first text layer. All right, now I got that looking good. Animated in, animated out. Make sure that you are adjusting the graph values to be 60% influence, just so everything's animating in and out at the exact same speed. And we're gonna do that for two more texts I'm going to make the third one say create and the fourth one say Justin Saran, which is just my name and the channel name. And finally, once that's all done, I'm gonna go up to effects and presets and search drop shadow and drag that drop shadow effect onto one of our text layers, change the opacity to 100, the softness to around 78, just so we get that dark glow behind the text that really makes it pop and stand out. And then we're just going to change the color of the drop shadow to a dark red and then copy and paste that to all the other text layers so that they have the same aesthetic. Make sure that your motion blur is set on all of them and voila, we pretty much have our entire intro and it's looking pretty great. Obviously the, the photos and the color that you pick for the overlay are going to make a huge difference. And now finally, we're just going to go to a, any music sourcing website and find a song that fits the energy for our edit, drop it into our timeline, and that, my friends, is how it's done. 
And there we have it folks, a dynamic YouTube intro that you can make in After Effects within about 10 minutes from scratch. Now, super cool. Feel free to play around with some of these techniques I talked about and make your intro yours. One tip I would suggest is keeping it a little bit slower because we all have the attention span of goldfish. And if your intro is a minute long, you're risking people clicking off of your video. And that is exactly what we don't want when trying to get YouTube views. Now, with that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments what you liked or what you wanna see going forward. And finally, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're posting every day or two and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. And I don't want you to miss that content, baby. So. Without further ado, I'm Justin, and I'll see you next time. Peace.